In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this three-tiered ladder bookcase that I made with one by pine that I got from the home center. Let's jump into this build. I started by using my table saw to rip my boards down to width. These rips will make up the frame of my bookcase. I made sure that I was using the riving knife in my table saw as these cheap pine boards tend to bow and flex, which if they were to pinch the blade, could cause some kickback. I took my freshly cut boards over to the radial arm saw and cut off the ends to freshen them up. And then I marked out the different lengths I needed, trying to avoid any knots in the wood. The tilted shelf legs required a degree cut higher than 60 degrees, and unfortunately my table saw is not able to accomplish that. So I went over to the band saw and cut out the angle close to the line, not passing the line. And then I'm gonna clean that up with some sandpaper to bring it to the line. I don't need the line to disappear, but I do need my angle to match up with the line. I next brought that piece back over to the table saw to cut it to length with the appropriate angle on the opposing side. This angle was less than 60 degrees, so it was able to be completed with the miter gauge. Next up is the bottom horizontal piece of the frame. First, an angle needs to be cut onto this piece for the front side, and then the back side needs to be cut to length square. Oops, forgot to lock the miter gauge. Next up is the back vertical member of the frame. Notable for this piece is that it's going to receive two through mortises. I use mortise and tenon joinery for the stretchers so that way I can avoid any unsightly hardware and still retain a great strength against racking for the bookcase. Now I'm still a student of woodworking and my technique on cutting the mortise and tenon is not very good. If you have any feedback you'd like to share with me, I'd love to hear it. At the time of this filming, YouTube has turned off the comments in my videos to protect minors such as my son Bruce, who has been featured in a couple of my videos. So if you would like to let me know, you can go to my Instagram page and comment on the picture of this video. Now it was at this very moment that my heart basically sank as the piece that I had worked on so hard split. However, I determined I can go forward by clamping that piece and then gluing it up later after I finish the through mortise. To split the piece, I used a pair of scissors and then I filled it with glue. Now there was enough strength that the piece wanted to go back together without a crack, so I did not clamp it up. It went ahead and dried on its own. The second through mortise is cut onto the opposite side about 10 inches from its end. This is an opportunity where my workmate bench comes in real handy. I used the clamping ability with the bench dogs in order to hold it down in preparation to cutting some dados with my router. Now the dados are important because I'm going to be using those to hold all the shelves. I'm using a template specific to my router and a 3 quarter inch bit I own to line up a fence to run my router against. The dados are important because it's all about hiding hardware and getting rid of unnecessary cross members. I could have done this where I had some more cross members connecting to different supports in order to support the shelves, but I figured if I had some dados those would be able to be enough to support the shelves without any hardware or additional cross members as I've seen in some other designs. The dado that I just cut is for the top shelf. Now the top shelf will receive a dado on this vertical piece as well as on the diagonal piece of the frame, making this top shelf like a top of a table where it helps lock together all the legs. But what I'm doing right now is marking out the easier dimension, the vertical dimension of how high these shelves are on this vertical back member piece and then transferring that line over to the other piece so that way they are the same height on each leg. We'll come back to these later. I contemplated using some mitered half lap joints to join the three frame pieces together, but I decided I'd rather keep this as an intermediate DIY. So let's use some pocket holes. Well, the pocket holes were used because both they're hidden and it's simple joinery. They do work well in this situation. The first pocket hole on the bottom horizontal was really simple because I got to use the table mounted jig. But the second one I needed to use the handheld and I needed to use it on this angled end. So I wanted to place the jig a little bit higher than it normally would be to account for that angled. So I had to make sure it was nice and square and I knew where the top should be mounted. And then I drilled it and it came out pretty close to the center. To start the frame assembly, I'm going to join the horizontal piece to the vertical piece and I'm going to ensure that they're nice and flat with a straight edge and then clamping them together so I don't have any movement. I do this so that way my pieces can be easily repeatable since I want both frames to be identical. 
I've adopted the mantra from the fictional character Benjamin Martin in the movie The Patriot, played by Mel Gibson, that he teaches his sons to aim small, miss small. So if I want these pieces to be as identical as possible, I need to make sure I aim as small as I can so that way I can get them repeatable. Now the third joint is not going to be connected until one of these frames is completely done. And then I'm going to take both of the frames and stack them on top of each other and clamp them down so that way they're locked in similar shape. And with them locked down, I'm going to go ahead and join that last joint on the top board with a bit of glue. I'm going to lock it down to the exact angle of the first one with a brad nail. And then I'm going to finish it off with a single screw. And this doesn't need to be a pocket hole because we're not going through end grain. With the frame together, I'm going to transfer the data locations from the vertical piece to the diagonal piece. I did this because the measurements for the vertical piece are whole numbers and the measurements for the diagonal piece are fractional. So it's much easier to do it this way than measuring up with a tape on the diagonal piece. And now all I have to do is bring those frames over to the workmate, clamp them down, and cut the dados just as I did for the vertical leg. With the frame coming together, it's a good time to hit it with some sandpaper and then soften the edges with the chamfer. The design of this project was influenced by the wood that I already had in hand on stock. I didn't want to go back and forth between the home center, so I just picked what I had here and then drew it up in SketchUp. So here's a seven and a half inch wide board and I cut it into three about 18 inch increments. I also had some 3 quarter inch square dowels on hand from a project that I never finished. These would be perfect for the stretchers as they'll fit right into the mortises. The assembly process can be extremely stressful as a lot of the parts need to come together at the same time. For those kind of assemblies I choose to use Tight Bond Original because this glue has a longer set time than Tight Bond 2. Rather than pounding the shelves in, I decided to use a long clamp to firmly seat the shelves into the dados. I used my combination square to set the overhang on the bottom two shelves to match the top shelf, as the overhang on the top shelf is set by the back of the vertical leg. The whole glue up process took about 20 minutes and I ended up using all of my long clamps to hold the two sides together. With the glue up complete, I'm going to go ahead and knock down the edges of the shelves with some sandpaper and sand down the extended tenons to go flush with the frame. To finish the project, I used three coats of clear water-based polyurethane. I was really happy with how this bookcase turned out. It's very strong. It does not rack or tilt. The shelves hold nice and firm. It was a bit of a gamble as to whether it was going to work, and it turned out nice.